I bought this medical ultrasound bladder scanner from eBay and it's not broken. So I bet you're thinking, come on buy it, fix it. We don't want to know about your bladder problems, we want to see repair videos. Well, I bought it because I plan on repurposing it. We'll have a few of these Swiss black nose valets. Um, quite a rare breed of sheep. And this is Juliana on the left and Juliette on the right, two of our young lambs. And I wanted to see if I could use it or modify it to see if the sheep are in lamb. And I also thought I might make an interesting teardown video. Uh, and I found a quite a few interesting things about it, so stay tuned right till the end of the video. So, it's a board scan too. It's made by a company called Mediwatch. Uh, I found these units cost around about £8,000 when they were new. And this one was on eBay for £325. Uh, now, I could have bought a proper Chinese made animal scanner, which were about £1,000. But I wasn't sure about the build quality and, you know, software and all the rest of it. So I thought, you know, at least this would be good quality and be and well made with it being ex-NHS. So I contacted the seller and explained what I wanted to use it for. But he wasn't sure whether it would do what I wanted. So I said, well, look, I'll take a chance on it uh, and offered him £260 and he accepted it. It's in remarkably good condition. It looks like it's had very little use. Uh, so we'll switch it on and we'll have a look at the various menus and things and then we'll open it up. Now, one thing I have noticed is that uh, it doesn't seem to keep the time when it's switched off. So I think there might be some kind of battery uh, backup inside that uh, probably needs replaced. So we'll have a look at that while we're in there. So we'll plug it in. And now it has got a, a battery, in, a rechargeable battery in the side here as well, but I think the cells in that aren't so great. So I'll switch it on once I find the power button, which is around here somewhere. There we go. This is the uh, scanner probe. Apparently it does 3.5 and 5 megahertz which is within the range for doing ultrasound on sheep so that's why I thought well it might uh, it might do the job All right, we'll just wait for it to uh, load up there it's uh, touch screen operated it's got a little stylus here it's got a rather nice connector on the uh, ultrasound probe with lots of pins in it we'll just plug that back in and we'll just wait for it to uh, finish doing its thing all right so i might uh, bring the camera down a bit so we can see the uh, menu a bit more clearly so one moment please it's a bit better so as we can see we've got uh, a few different options here we've got a, a brightness a contrast the size doesn't seem to do anything uh, we've got adult child settings which brings up a, a small menu with about three different options uh, one of which is a service settings uh, which needs a password so we'll have a look at that later as well uh, I'll just cancel this uh, we've got patient which lets you add a few patient details in there I'll just cancel that uh, and we've got scan so if I hit that you can see the uh, the image changing slightly if I just stick it on me stomach or whatever there you can see uh, it doing different sort of shapes and that and stuff apparently it works better with ultrasound gel but you know I'm not uh, I'm not getting covered in that just thought to try it and also when you press the button on here it um, it freeze frames the image and it lets you do all that things like, you know, sort of uh, draw patterns on the image to for sizing and things and whatever. And that's about it. There's a print option, uh, a thing for viewing past images, but there's no images on it. Apparently you can plug a USB memory stick in it. And that's about it. It's fairly limited in the options that we have. So uh, I want to investigate that as well. So I'll um, unplug the probe. We'll switch it off and we'll take it apart and see what makes it tick all right we'll just remove the battery that's the uh nicad 
rechargeable pack which is 12 volt 4.5 amp hours and apparently it was installed and charged on July 2020 that's when the uh, new cells were installed so they may need changing or I might actually see if I can put um, some lithium cells in here with a charge controller but I might do that at some point right how does it come apart then we have some screws around here so I think I'll start by removing those and this is unit number 26 so I don't know whether they've made many of these but right that's a little uh, stylus Now, it does have a thermal printer, uh, which is just in here. That's a little thermal printer board there. That's where the ultrasound probe connects to, which seems to disappear over here. We seem to have a rugged compact flash card in the back. Uh, which is a one gigabyte rugged compact flash, industrial. Let's get this handle in out of the way. Let's move this probe. Um, it looks like we've got a Bluetooth module here. We'll see how this board comes out. That looks like a um, high voltage driver for the uh, cold cathode lights on the display. Got a few logic ICs on the back there. Um, that's a quite bigger one. I'm not sure what uh, number it is. Let's just see if I can uh, see the number on that. Um, actually, that's a PIC microcontroller. It is a PIC 18F 2455. I'll see if I can pull the uh, data sheet up for that. And it's. Um, Looks like it's got a 4 megahertz crystal making that. We've got an analog devices chip here by the look of it. LTC1628CG. So I'm not sure what that is. show what that chip is there there's another small surface mount chip here uh, DSH 0C365 AMT so I don't know what that is right we'll see if we can get this board out then or unplugged well there's a cable here which you probably can't see from the camera angle which uh, goes to the display which I'll need to see if I can unplug right, that's that unplugged I'm going to unplug this ultrasonic probe which uh, seems to be locked in um, we'll just see if I can push that out of the way and it should get a bit more access to the thing now put that over there let's unplug this fan and I think I'll just leave the rest of the leads plugged in for now. I guess that one must be for the touch screen. So it looks like this is a custom board. There's a, uh, a big Spartan chip there by the look of it. Or Z Xilinx I think it's called. Um, yeah it looks like some kind of uh, Bluetooth module that. Looks like we've got a little bit of a buzzer there. There's a couple of LEDs. Looks like a power supply area here. And I guess this is the main sort of computer board in there. So I think we'll uh, try and have a look at that. 
I'm just trying to think whether to unplug some of these. Yeah, tell you what, I'll unplug this whole board because uh, I can always look back on the video if I need to see where the wires go. Nice. I shall move the display out of the way and we'll have a look at this board. Well, I can't see any signs of a backup battery as yet, but I would think it's probably going to be in here if there is one. Now, is this just going to lift off? And yes, there is a backup battery in there. A small lithium one. Now, that looks like a single board computer. Um, I did do a quick search on the boot up screen and it said it was a geode. I forgot the number of the board, but I'll, uh, I'll bring it up on the screen. So I think this battery's probably failed. Can we get this board out? Uh, if I undo this ribbon. Which I guess is for the display. And I might need a smaller screwdriver. So it has actually turned out into a little bit of a fix it video because uh, I think we need to replace that battery. It's got a socket on the back there as well that plugs into a rare uh, another connector down here I'll put a bit of tape over some components there and oh, there's the uh, the CPU which is an AMD geode I've got a few other support chips here that looks like RAM uh, looks like more RAM on this side of the board that's probably ROM, that's probably an I.O. chip and I guess that's maybe something like video possibly so yeah, small industrial uh, computer module actually yeah, it's got the uh, it's actually got written on here, it is a SOM2354 so that's what this actual module here is Yeah, some two, three, five, four, revision A one made in Taiwan. So actually tells you there as well on that sticker. I've just noticed. It looks like the battery goes from there to there. So let's see what uh, voltage we've got on that. And the answer is not a lot. 0.2 of a volt. So I would say that that is the problem. Right. Now I don't think I've got any of these batteries with the um, with the solder tabs on. Um. Uh, I don't know if I've got some 2032 cells and I'm not sure I've got some battery holders which will maybe to uh, install somewhere so I shall have a look and be back in a moment right I've found something that'll do it's uh, off, off a Milwaukee one key drill that I bought some time ago but unfortunately uh, the drills don't seem very repairable everything's all encased in resin so uh, I think it's just be a parts only thing but anyway I've got that so what I'm planning on doing is getting some hot melt glue kind of after I've soldered the wires I'm kind of squidging it down with some hot melt glue on the board like that and I think that should uh, that should do so the positive goes towards the edge connector here so we'll see if we can remove this uh... Don't! 
board back in after I've got the board on the floor. I'll just put a bit of fresh solder on there. See if that wants to come off now. And it's off, right. So I want the negative in that hole and the positive in that hole. Nice, right. I'm gonna give that a bit of a clean up. I'm just going to check that with the uh, magnifying glass because I don't know if I've got a bit of a solar splat between two of the legs of a chip there now. Let's uh, open it out. So that looks okay. <coughs> we'll get some hot glue and we'll kind of glue that down, kind of like that. Right, so we'll pop the battery in. And we'll see if we've got three volts on those contacts now. Yes. Well, that's one little job done. And that's the old battery there, which... Uh, I think I had 0.2 of a volt in. That's got 0.3 of a volt in now, so yeah. So that was definitely the problem with the uh, with the clock. Yeah, 0.29 of a volt. So hopefully the unit should keep its time now. Right, so that looks okay. So I've noticed on the uh, motherboard as well here, it says uh, port a scan, not board scan. So I wonder if this is a kind of generic board for like just a general purpose ultrasound scanner rather than just a bladder scanner. Uh, is there anything else worthy of note on this? It looks like there's a couple of trim pots there. And that's near the area where the um, ultrasound probe goes. So I guess they might be for adjustment or calibration or something. Uh, I'll see if there's anything on this Bluetooth module here. Uh, it just says WML C40AH. So I'm not sure what... Um, what Bluetooth module that is. And it also says there, MediWatch Porter Scan 2. So again, that kind of reaffirms that um, this board is just a general purpose ultrasound scanner rather than just a bladder scanner. Right, I think uh, we'll put it back together then and have a poke at this compact flash card next. Ah, I didn't put the screws back in. No! A few moments later. Now we'll reassemble it. This plug for the display and also the one for the ultrasound. Ah. 
Right, so hopefully that should be it all back together. Right, we'll uh, plug some power in and we'll just check that it boots back up and still works. Right, we'll see if it uh, keeps the time now. It's actually O2 O3 as I'm recording this. Right, so I'm just going to unplug the power. And we'll see if it boots up with the right time now. And yes, so it's keeping the time now, so yeah, so we fixed that part. Right, I'm going to shut it down, and then we'll pull out the uh, compact flash card, and we'll have a look at that on the computer. I've plugged the compact flash card into the computer, and here it is here, disk one, the uh, one gigabyte. And it looks like half of it is uh, a partition called boot and the other half of it is a partition called data and there's uh, 19 meg that's uh, unallocated so if we have a look on the uh, the first partition here uh, one thing that i've noticed is there's a driver here and it says xp and xpe which i think is xp embedded and i did notice on the compact flash slot there's the xp embedded a license file so I guess that's what it's using um, I've got some touchscreen drivers there um, I'll go back to here I think the main part that we're interested in or I'm interested in is this folder here called scan apps and this looks like the uh, this file multi here this looks like the main scanner application I did notice there's some uh, picture files here. Uh, now this is supposed to be a bladder scanner, but like I said, I suspect when I've looked at the board, I think it can do a lot more because there's a file here of kidney, which must be like a demo file. There's one here, liver, pelvic, prostate. There's another prostate one there, kidney left, kidney right. So I think my theory is correct that this is more a general purpose um, a general purpose ultrasound scanner and I think it's had some of the options restricted or limited I also noticed there's a folder here called archive and if we go into there there's a few different versions of the software so I'm going to uh, have a look at those soon in a debugger and we'll see what uh, if the what the differences are if there's anything uh, different between them um, there's also a folder here called flows which seems to have some um, possibly patient related data such as scans or something uh, and there's also a couple of files here p unknown p12345 which i think are patient numbers and there's also a file here called patient list uh, the only other thing that i noticed on this drive um there was a file it might be in scan apps actually called multiscan.ini and in this particular one that's in the same directory as the exe and um, it's only got one entry just saying probe one frequency equals zero now if we go into the other partition which uh, is data we've got some printer drivers here uh, so I guess that's what they were using to print out. I mean, even though it's got a built-in um, a built-in printer, but we've also got another multiscan.ini here. And if we have a look at that one, it says operator equals barred, uh, user mode equals zero, and it's got quite a few other um, options in, like main menu equals three three seven. Um, there's something else I noticed in here as well. Um, yeah, urology apps equals one. Now, one usually means true. 
So I wonder if there's any other apps we can enable in here, which is why I'm very curious to have a look at the uh, executable files to see if there's any other options we can enable in here. Um, there's the serial number, so if I want to change the serial number, I think it's just a matter of just changing it in this file here. So anyway, that's that's what I've found so far. Um, so we'll load the uh, executable into a debugger and we'll see what um, what things we can find out in that. So I've got the program loaded into x32 debug. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to search for in the current module, which is the uh, the executable file, I'm going to search for string references. And now this will be all these sort of strings uh, or sort of text that the um, that the program uses and probably displays to the uh, the user. Now we've got things that we can see straight away, sort of thing like enter a password for the new operator, password, blah blah blah, is not the same. Um, but here we've got uh, urology, abdominal, reports, urogyny and main menu, which are interesting because they're similar things to the um, to those pictures that we've seen. So I'm just going to do a search for apps and what we've got here, we've got urology apps that we've seen in the um, in the INI file, but we've also got urogyny apps abdominal apps, urology apps, uh, report apps. Uh, so I think we might have to add some of these to that uh, any file and uh, we'll see what happens there. Um, now I have had a little bit of a play with this program uh, and we actually can run it on the PC. It will complain a little bit that we've got an invalid port number. Um, I'll just turn the caps lock off and I can't initialize the scanner but it will actually run now one of the things now this is a slightly different version now because I have actually had a play with the uh, the any file and added some of these things already so if we go to the menu now and we go to applications we've got all these options now which we didn't have before and this is actually a slightly different version of the software that was on the scanner this is one of the ones that was in the uh, archive folder which seems to have a lot more functionality as well uh, we've also got things that have unlocked like test routines now which we didn't have before uh, we've also got settings and we've also got, we've got like an extra couple of tabs in here now that we didn't have before so we can turn things on and off which uh, we weren't able to do before but we've also got this advanced settings which uh, when we're going to service settings it still asks you for a password so I was looking at the program for a little bit and we'll just have to just type in there uh, let's say one two three four and we'll hit OK um, hopefully I've got a breakpoint set somewhere uh, if I just go to CPU there and the program has nicely stopped on a breakpoint that I've set where it compares two strings. Now the strings it's comparing are the ones just above where I've got my mouse here. Now there's the one, two, three, four that I've typed in and it's comparing it to a value of U10. Okay, so we'll just, uh, we'll see if U10 equals one, two, three, four or if they're different and uh, of course it's different so it says incorrect password so what happens if we type in U10 which is what it's checking against and we hit OK and we're stopped on the breakpoint again and it's now comparing to see if U10 equals U10 and it does <laughs> so the password is U10 so we can mess around with these settings now as well so i don't know if this is the same for all the units because if we do a search in the code if i just go back to uh, the strings here and i type in u10 we can see u10 is actually hard coded in the program uh, there it is there 
you must uh, what was it uh, it's near where it says incorrect password so that's uh, what it's comparing with so obviously u10 is the password so I think what we'll do, we'll um, we'll put all this um, newfound knowledge into use in the actual scanner. And we'll power it up, and we'll see uh, all these changes actually on the scanner itself. Right, the SD card's back in after the modifications, so we'll switch it on and we'll boot the thing up. Right. And it's nearly two o'clock in the morning again. I find it easier to do videos at this time of the morning because there's no noise, there's no distractions and things. But anyway, apart from that, um, what we'll notice straight away is we've got lots of different options now. We've got uh, just the depth of the scan. So if I press the button to start scanning, we can change the depth now. Uh, we can go 19 centimetres or 15 or well, which we couldn't do before. Uh, I'll just freeze that. Um, we can also replay. We've got like a little um, animation thing where it'll play through the last sort of 12 seconds or 12 frames of the uh, of what we've captured. We can put text on there now. We can move the image around. We can zoom in. We can add uh, markers on here if we want to um, do things like that. Um, then also in this menu here now, I think volume will actually calculate the volume of whatever. If we're going to menu now, we've got all these applications. We've got uh, aorta, gallbladder, liver, pancreas, bladder things again, kidney, prostate, testes. Um, what else have we got here? Um, there's options for the display. We can have inverted, reverse. There's a demo mode. Um, what else have we got? Uh, I did have a test mode option up at one point, but I must have uh, knocked that off. But there was another mode as well for testing, which uh, brought up a lot of other different options. Uh, if we go into settings now, and we're going to the advanced settings, and then into service settings, it asks you for the password, which we know is U10. That we got from the debugger. We hit OK and we're into the settings on that now as well. Um, I think, was there something to do with the... Um, I'm not sure if, if you could enable the test in here as well, maybe. I can't quite remember now, but I did have the test menu up as well. That was a, another thing that I had, uh, I had going. Um, and I think that's about it so we've got a lot more options and I think this will actually do the job that I wanted for now so yeah I'm very uh, happy with that right I shall just shut it down and if you remember at the start of the video I did say um, I've got something uh, special to show you right at the very end well I'm just going to pop out the SD card Sorry, CF card even, and pop this one in that I've made. Right, I'm just going to dim the lights as well. Now, imagine you're uh, at the uh, the doctor's and the nurse. You know, you're lying on the uh, on the couch waiting to get an ultrasound, and you know the nurse comes along, switches the machine on. You know, you're sitting there nice and comfortable. And then all you hear is the nurse going, what the? I have to switch the scanner on because this has happened. So yeah, I thought I'd uh, make it run Doom as well. So we've got an ultrasound scanner running Doom now. So yeah. So I'm quite happy with that all in all. So uh, yeah. Um, well, I hope you found this uh, video as interesting as I did making it. Um, and that's all I can really say on that one. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comment section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.